told you to be praying for him. Look what happened. <laughs> Look what happened. Man, we're so excited to have you guys here. Thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but Justin and I have known each other for almost over eight years, actually, and uh, from his playing days at SMU. And, uh, and so he just finished his fourth year in the NFL, which is significant because NFL stands for not for long. Not for long, and so his fourth year, and uh, four seasons, two Super Bowls, one Super Bowl win. Man, what an amazing ride you've had. I mean, there's guys that stay in the league 20 years and never go to the Super Bowl. You've been twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. I mean, that's the best thing about the NFL, right, is, is you get to see people experience things that not everyone gets to experience. You know, the money's cool, you know, but it's really the experiences, the people that you meet, the people that you get to help. I mean, I walk in our hometown elementary school, and I'm like, Jesus, walking on the, on the field, you know. So just the impact on people. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been fun, a, a great four years. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Denver, we're so thrilled to have you. I'll always love being with you. Uh, Denver and Justin, y'all have known each other since? Third grade. Third grade. Yes. Right. It's been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> third grade. And so you have two precious children at home. Blakely, who's how old is she now? Uh, Blakely will be eight in August. Yeah. And then we have Katie, who will be two next month on the 11th. Awesome. Fantastic. Yes. And so normally they come with you guys when you come down. But the, today I think uh, Blakely had a cheerleading uh, function today. So it, her min, your, she's your mini-me. Yes. Uh, Blakely is my mini me, she's my little cheerleader, and then we've got Katie, who we always joke is going to be a linebacker. Um, so she's she's quite the handful. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so thrilled that you're here. You know, I have a lot, so many questions for you. I tried to think of questions that all of us would like to know. And uh, yeah, see that best day ever, best day ever, most expensive day ever. <laughs> You can't see, but the back of his shirt says, uh, best money ever spent. Uh -uh. So. Uh -uh. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I love you being here because I want to ask you some questions that you probably get asked a lot, but uh, just kind of hear your perspective on things. What is it like to be an NFL wife? That is my number one question I get asked. Um, it's crazy. It's... It's exciting, and oh, I love that picture. Um, <laughs> it's just, I just like to look at us as normal people. We don't live a life like a lot of NFL people do. We are very frugal. I joked last service that it's not really we, it's my husband that is frugal. <laughs> um, but we just, we're just hometown people, small town people, and we just, we're very blessed, and we've lived an exciting life, but... It's just a normal life. Justin's just a normal guy. You know, he's a football player to a lot of people, but to me, he's a husband, and to our girls, he's a father. So that's just how we look at it, and it's exciting. It's a blessing, but it's just a normal life for me. In Pottsboro, I mean, uh, how big is Pottsboro? Uh, about 2,200. 2,200 people, and you give both – Give or take. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you both grew up there and uh, have been boyfriend girlfriend since the third grade. So, and I mean, amazing. I mean, it, it is the small town experience, right? Yeah. And uh, and so that's pretty amazing. How, uh, Denver? I know, uh, you know, how has it been really raising children and being a mom and to uh, in the situation you're in? How has that been for you? Um, so for anybody that doesn't know, Justin lives in L.A. during the season, and the girls and I live here in Texas in our small town of Pottsboro. Um, the first season, Blakely and I lived out there with them, and then when we got pregnant with our second, it actually was just a blessing because Blakely and I moved back to Texas in December, at the end of December, and then we had our daughter in March, and literally the day that we had our daughter, they started COVID restrictions. And so our family would not have been able to come out and see us. We wouldn't have been able to come home. So it was really a blessing, but we've been here ever since, and uh, it's been really tough. It's absolutely not easy living away from your husband. It, in this day and world, day and life, it's not, um, but I've just really had to rely on my faith. I've had to rely on 
Justin, who I think God speaks to me a lot through my husband. He's my strong point and just really keeps me grounded and helps me remember that this is a blessing. It's, it's hard to see that in some moments, but with every hard time that we hit, every hard moment, it's all going to be worth it. And God shows us that every single day. So yeah, it's been tough, but and, worth it. Yeah. And I know uh, it was particularly di difficult for you when Justin broke his foot. Why don't you tell everybody about that uh, saga? Because it's been a saga. It has. Um, so, Justin, and not everybody knows this story, but when Justin was, before he got hurt the first time, he came up to me and he said, I just want you to know, God told me I'm going to get hurt. And I was like, what? You know, okay. Okay, whatever. He didn't tell me that. He told you that. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so, he, he did. Uh, I think it was a month or two later, he broke his foot. So I'm like, okay, well, you told me this is going to happen. Well, he gets all healed up and everything. Then he, break, he tells me, I'm going to break my foot again. God told me I'm going to break my foot again. I said, okay. We need to teach him how to prophesy to himself. <laughs> For real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. I'm like, okay, listen. <laughs> well, sure enough. The thing about a prophecy is God gives it to you. So I was just yeah. Yeah. reiterating he that. He told him. He said, I'm going to break my foot again. And sure enough, he broke his foot again. Um, he did break it a third time. And why it's significant is because in the NFL, you do that once or twice, yeah. they cut you're you. Done. Right. Right. Yeah. And say, look, you, you can't stay healthy, so you're gone. Yeah, and they technically technically did. Um, they just gave me an injury settlement, and I went through. But then the following year, they ended up bringing me back. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's been a process. Yeah. A really long process. And it's, it's definitely been something that not only Justin, but I have had to really focus on our faith and know that, you know, because it's hard when you look at these other men that are just, they don't have a single injury. Justin does every single thing that they do. He goes to every practice. He goes to every meeting. He puts in the work outside of it, and he keeps getting hurt, and then you see these other guys that aren't living faithfully and aren't doing God's work, and yet they're thriving. So yeah. it, it was tough, but again, there's a bigger picture. We try and keep that in mind, so, yeah. but it's been worth it. Yeah. And Justin, first of all, congratulations on uh, the Rams winning the Super Bowl. I know you'll have that ring in about two months, and so we want to see it the day it comes in. Yeah. I'll get it to you. Yeah. yeah. I can see myself preaching with it on uh, right I got to get a... Uh, he probably wouldn't let many people do that, well, but I think I he would let you. I got to get an insurance policy on it. And, uh, <laughs> stuff. But. Yeah, so we're excited about that. You know, Justin, you got to play with some of the best players in the league. I mean, Aaron Donald, one of the best athletes in the NFL, one of the top players at any position in the NFL. You got to play with him. Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, this last season, you got to come in. Vaughn Miller, uh, who's right down here in DeSoto, you got to play with. And Matthew Stafford, who grew up a mile from here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I, again, I try to think about what are the questions you might want to ask and so one of the questions I have for you is, what is Matthew Stafford really like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Matthew, Matthew's great. I mean, he's, he's the kind of quarterback that you want. He's real genuine, and he's not above anyone else. Uh, he, you get a lot of some veterans, and when you're a rookie, you talk to them, and they kind of treat you like, who are you? You know, I'm above you type thing. Well, Matthew, like, he sits in the back of the bus with us. You know, he's the type of guy you just want to – sit around a campfire and he'll talk to you all day. You know, he treats everyone the same. Um, great leader, like I said, genuine guy. And uh, he, he really seems like he cares about everybody. It's kind of what you want in a leader just to know that they care, you know. Yeah. And uh, you would never know he's Matthew Stafford by just hanging out with him. So uh, it's something you can really appreciate. And you had a very close friend with Cooper Cup, right? I mean, you guys are close friends. Cooper had a Bible study in his home. How was that? Yeah, Coop, Coop is, he's a different guy. I mean, he's something special in uh, every way. I mean, just so talented athletically, but also um, work ethic is just through the roof in everything that he does. And he's real methodical and so consistent in what he does. I think that's a lot, a true testament to how consistent his performance has been. Um, but he, he was very outspoken with his faith. Um, kind of through this past year, I think God led him to really um, speak about it and be open about it uh, in the media and stuff, and that's something that he 
was I think one of the things about. we always wonder about when we hear a player testifying or talking about their relationship with God, we wonder how real is that? Yeah. You know, because the sport is such a violent sport and there's so, uh, so many different characters playing that the, and so many opportunities because they're very wealthy uh, people playing. So is Cooper, is he the real deal? Yeah, I always gauge uh, in the new, t- the Bible is, talks about you will know those who worship me by their fruit. Are, are their actions in alignment with the Bible? No, we're not perfect. We all sin, et cetera, et cetera. But I would say that Cooper is the real deal. His day-to-day uh, actions are in alignment with, uh, I believe, who God wants him to be and so I would authenticate that especially Denver knows his wife um, better than I do but I think she would reiterate that with his wife as well yeah I read somewhere where he's a third generation NFL player his grandfather's father now him yeah wow yeah. that's pretty amazing yeah. yeah very yeah and uh uh you know just being in the NFL going through the things and overcoming the obstacles you've had to overcome how's the Lord stretched you grown you have you grown spiritually yeah through the through my injuries like I said I broke my foot three times um and each time I feel like he showed it to me and I shared that with my wife as she shared it and I I just took it as a um a warning as like hey I'm gonna put you through things learn from it grow from it and I'm gonna shape and mold you and who I want you to be through this adversity and you, you kind of see, you see the end and what you want, and then God has a different plan and up and downs and stuff. But I think, I think those up and downs are necessary. That adversity is necessary. It, it grows your faith. And like I said, it allows you, it allows God to um, mold you into the person that he wants you to be. And uh, he's got certain stuff planned for us and stuff that will go beyond our imagination and our financial life, our relationship life, our functionality on a day-to-day basis. And I think that's one of the ways that he has kind of molded me into being that yeah. person. And Denver, uh, you know Justin better than anybody. Have you seen the growth in him? I mean, you think about the last four or five years, you know. Uh, first of all, I mean, you, he came to Christ as a football player at SMU and, uh, and really jumped in over his head, just wanted to be disciple. He was here, and you were uh, greeting people out here. You became a member of the church. You guys became a member of the church. So we saw all that. But when God begins to work internally in you, changing your motivations, changing your desires, changing your perspective, did you see that in him? Have you noticed? I mean, oh, absolutely. I, I think seeing him grow spiritually has been the most amazing thing because he truly has just. Especially when, I know we keep talking about his injuries, but when you look at a guy that gets injured one time, he's going to have a little bit of doubt. But he's going to be, okay, we'll get it figured out. You get hurt a second time, that doubt grows a little bit bigger. You get hurt a third time, Justin, I mean, he's, of course, he's been upset. He's had a little bit of doubt. But I've never seen anybody handle something so gracefully um, and just giving it all to God. He literally gives every second of every day to God. He's not perfect, but you can look at him and you can think of an average person or just a person in the NFL, they're not gonna handle it the way that he did. And he has just grown so much. And in that aspect, he's really grown me in my faith and our girls. So we're just, we're thankful for that growth that he's had. Well, you know, this is something, Justin, you've known that God has called you to this place and it's, you've never struggled with it being about you. Mm -hmm. You've always known it's been about the Lord, it's been about your family. And, uh, and so I really want to commend you. It's something for a wife to testify. There's one thing for some of y'all to say something nice about me. Nancy, <laughs> she knows me. And so, uh, so when she testifies. Well, you didn't ask about communication. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. She's throwing bombs over here. That's right, yeah. Next time. Well, hey, thank you guys for coming. We're so excited for you. I mean, winning the Super Bowl is a big, big deal. And so now you're about to write a new chapter in your life. Tell us about uh, the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, I just signed with Tennessee on a one-year deal on Wednesday. Um, yeah, it'll be a new new chapter for us. We uh, The Rams offered a little something 
to come back. And uh, I didn't play a whole lot. Was on practice squad most of the time. And kind of brought up and down and, and just kind of fought that. And then they brought in Vaughn Miller, and they were like, of course, you know, step to the side. We got a new guy. So <laughs> can't really complain about that. Those as far of you from who there. don't know Vaughn Miller, he's one of the top linebackers. He plays yeah. Justin's position in the world. And he's yeah. from DeSoto, Texas. And yeah. So, yeah. And so can't complain about that from their standpoint. Um, but just kind of looked at it logically and prayed about it and was like, you know, Logically, we don't fit in this room, or I don't fit in this room. So uh, I'm not going to shut a door, but then had my agent go to work and found something with Tennessee. It's the third time they've tried to get me over there. So it just worked out. It happened really quick. And and so, yeah, signed in New Adventure, and we'll be in Nashville. Yeah, you guys will be moving to Nashville. Titans, y'all. Titans, y'all. That's it. <laughs> We're going to fit in a little bit better there yeah, than we do Yeah, let's more. More your speed. <laughs> More your speed. Well, hey, before you uh, leave us this morning, uh, Justin Denver, is there anything you want to leave us with? What, what, what do you want to? What do you want? What do you want the last thought to be here? Yeah, I'll share what I shared in the first service. As I think over my time as a Christian, which is about eight years, uh, a true believer in Christ. I think over all the adversity I've gone through and all the um, problems every place that I've been, I think just I come back to a foundation and a faith. I think that's just I pride myself in getting up a little earlier and spending 30 minutes to an hour in the Word. And I just think that's so important for all of us to do is to get into our Word daily and just keep that foundation of faith, to have the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, and peace are the first three, and just to go to live our daily lives living as Christ would want us to live and just to exemplify him on a daily basis. So uh, just that foundation, no matter where you go, what you do, what business you're in, uh, I think that's just such an important thing to do. Um, and then may Christ lead you where he leads you. Amen. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you both of you so much for being here with us this morning. Let's give them a big hand. Yeah. This, these are our folks. Yeah.